good morning year seven and um, i hope you had a lovely week in the sunshine um, and welcome to your third distance learning assembly so the title of today's assembly is called we don't have to get there on our own okay so i can't quite believe that we are now into our 11th week of working from home so that's 11 whole weeks of you doing schoolwork, you know in a completely different environment than you have been you know all of the years previously and actually our 14th week away from school because we've had two weeks for Easter and we've had a half term in there as well. So that's 14 whole weeks um, of, you know, us not getting to see one another. Um, so this week, uh, we also started our online tutor sessions and I have absolutely loved getting to see and hear um, from some of you over Teams. Now seeing lots of you reminded me just a little bit why I love my job. Okay, I love being part of a team. And right now, you know, I am part of the Embrook team, just as I have been um, for the last six years of my life. So this assembly is all about how being part of a team is, you know, amazing and how achieving things as part of a team is often much easier and actually much more rewarding to recognize that we have we have achieved things because we are part of a team so that's what this week's is all about it's all about teamwork and how being part of a team is really one of the greatest things so how do you want to feel at the end of year seven that's kind of my question for today so on Tuesday the 21st of July, which is less than four weeks away, you will have finished your whole first year of secondary school. And you will have finished that with a set of obstacles that no other year sevens have ever even had to dream of overcoming. Now everybody's had obstacles to overcome um, in kind of the past couple of months, uh, and we are no different, are we? Um, but actually that is an achievement in itself. We've made it this far, and we're gonna make it to the end of year seven in one piece, just a little bit different than all the other times. Now, I would love it if on that day, on the 21st of July, you feel like you have achieved something great, because you will have, and I want you to be proud of yourselves. I also want you to feel as though you did this as part of a team, the Embrook team. This assembly is a reminder that you are not alone. You not only have your family at home and your friends near you, but you also have us, all of the people at school. So I was thinking to myself, who is on your team? So I started by thinking, who is on my team? I've got lots of people on my team. I have got my wonderful family, I've got my friends, I've got so many people in my life that are always rooting for me and always wanting me to do my best. And I have no doubt that you have lots of people in your life just like that too. Um, so I was thinking, you obviously have your family, whatever shape or form that takes, there are definitely people in your family that want the absolute best for you. You've got your friends, okay? And that's friends from school, that's friends from before school, that's friends that you've made outside of school. They will always be on your team as well. But you also have um, your teachers, you have me, your head of year, you have your tutor, you have all of those people in your life. Um, and the last one I thought of was, was your community. Now I um, keep kind of seeing all these lovely good news stories um, about people finding things um, and then trying to return them to their owners or helping people when they're in need. So actually wherever you live, whether that be kind of Wakingham, um, Bracknell, um, anywhere at all, your community is also on your team. Not everybody in your community might be on your team at the same time. But even a stranger can be on your team because fundamentally we're all the same and we do all look out for each other um, when we need to. So always remember you have a team out there. There's always people um, who want the best for you and want you um, to achieve things. Now this is Barack Obama, I'm sure you've heard of him. And I wanted to kind of let you know that, you know, it's, it's okay to ask for help because actually it's better to ask for help. We're not alone in this world and we can't achieve everything we want to achieve on our own. So I thought I would uh, obviously uh, give you a quote um, and this quote is from Barack Obama. So he said, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. I do that every day. Asking for help isn't a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. It shows you have the courage to admit when you don't know something and to learn something new. And I think that's really important. We should never, ever, ever be afraid to ask for help. We shouldn't be afraid of what other people will say when they hear us asking for help, because it's not a weakness. It shows you are so much stronger than someone who's not willing to ask for help. Those who aren't willing to ask for help are not willing to learn, are not willing to admit that they don't know everything. And no 
nobody knows everything. Nobody knows everything they need to. And that's why it's good to ask for help. It's good to, you know, reach out if we're struggling, such as emailing your tutor if you're having a really bad day, just so they can kind of, you know, email your teachers and make sure they know um, that, you know, things aren't great, but they're going to get better. You know, reaching out to your friends, your family. Asking for help is not a weakness, it's definitely a strength because every single person in the world, no matter what they tell you, has needed help and will need help at some time in their life. So I thought I'd show you some examples, just like I do every week. Now this week they're all a little bit sporty, um, but they show that we don't get anywhere on our own. We only get places because of other people and other things. So I started with a little bit of an idol of mine. So this is Elwood Kipchoge, um, and he's on the side. He's uh, the guy in the white vest. Um, and on October 12th, 2019, I got up nice and early in the morning to watch this man run um, a marathon in under two hours, which is just an amazing achievement. But how did he get to that point? Well, his amazing success, it didn't just happen. Um, he didn't just like get up one morning in Vienna and go, you know what, I'm gonna run a two hour marathon. That's not how it worked. He had to work ridiculously hard. He himself, it was his legs that got him round in two hours. But as we saw, um, there isn't actually a video because we don't quite have time for the video. But as you will have seen if you watched it or listened to my explanation, um, he felt amazing when he achieved this lifelong dream of running this sub two hour marathon, but he only got there because of the people around him. Kipchoge got there with the help of an amazing and dedicated coach, okay, so he had his coach there on the sidelines, he had been coaching him for years and years to, you know, make sure he was capable of doing what he wanted to. He also had 41 pace setters who helped him keep his ridiculous pace of 2 minute 50 per kilometre. That's two and a half times around the track in less than three minutes. And he did that 42 times. Um, now to me, the fact that he had people helping him around him, that doesn't belittle his achievements one bit. He was the one that ran the 26.2 miles at this pace. He was the only one that did that. But what it does show us is that we can't achieve success on our own. Okay, so we can't achieve success on our own and we definitely won't ever be able to do that. So the fact that he had all those paces and his coach and everybody else around him to help him doesn't make it any less of an achievement for him. It just proved to him that he needed others to help him. Now my second example is again a little bit close to my heart. So um, this title is Henderson won't have got there on his own. Okay, so Henderson is the captain um, of the Liverpool team in, in 2020. Um, now last night Liverpool um, won their 28th game of the season and put themselves 23 points clear at the top of the Premier League. Um, they beat Crystal Palace 4-0 and it was a true team performance because four different people scored a goal. Okay, now to me that shows a true team spirit because it's not just one person, it's four people out of 11 um, that scored a goal, okay? And each of those goals, it wasn't just one person running from one end of the pitch to the other, it was definitely involving lots of other people passing, etc. Now Liverpool will no doubt win the Premier League this season, more than 30 years after their last top flight league of victory. However, when their captain, Jordan Henderson, lifts the Premier League trophy, he will not lift it for his own victory, nor will their manager, Jurgen Klopp. Whoever lifts the trophy will know that they are only lifting that trophy because of everyone on that team, okay? They won't have got there on their own. I know football's a team sport, so obviously that's kind of an obvious point, but actually it doesn't mean that just the footballers got them there. They wouldn't have got there without the coaches, without doctors, without physiotherapists, without the chefs that create their food, without the drivers who drive them to matches, without the ball boys and girls on the sidelines, without referees, without linesmen. Victory in, every, in almost every single walk of life is achieved not alone, but with the help of others. And like I said, that doesn't make it any less impressive. Those people still train so hard to have that victory. But it makes it more special, in my opinion, because you get to share it with so many other people. So, I thought I would finish us off with a quote. Um, so, this quote um, says, Those who pass by us do not go alone and do not leave us alone. They leave a bit of themselves and take a little of us. Okay, now, I think this kind of says a lot about life in general, but it also says a lot about the things that we achieve as part of a team. What it means is that every single person who arrives in our life, who you know just passes us by or makes a bigger impression, 
they don't just kind of pass us by and that's it. They actually pass us by and they leave something with us. You know, they might leave that sense of kind of um, achievement. They might leave us with um, something else, but everything that those people do um, impacts our life in some way. And actually, I love that idea. I love that every single thing that happens in our life happens and affects us. There's nothing in our life that just comes in and goes and nothing happens as a result of it. So all of the success that we achieve in our life is because we were helped by others. Now up the top, um, you can see a very long word that says pratichyat samatpada. And that means that everything is connected. It's a Buddhist word, so it's a Buddhist idea. And they believe that every single thing in the world is connected. So everything I do affects somebody else. Everything they do affects somebody else. You can't do anything that doesn't affect the world around us. And I love that idea because it shows that we are all part of something bigger, okay? We're not here alone. Nobody is really alone. You know, there's billions of people on this earth. There's billions of plants, billions of animals. Um, and everything we do affects something else. So actually, that's the whole point of this assembly. We must remember that we are not alone. This world is huge and we are a part of it um, and everything we do affects something else. So I suppose I kind of want you just to leave with the message that be careful with what you do. Make sure the things you do are great because they will affect others. And if we live our life doing good things and being a good person, that will make the whole world a better place because everything we do affects everything else. And in terms of teamwork, I really hope you go away from this assembly and if you are struggling and you're thinking to yourself, you know what, I've still got three and a half more weeks of school and I just don't know how I'm going to get through it. You are part of a team, you are not alone. If you want to reach out to your family or your friends, that's great, but you've also got all of us at school, okay? No one gets to year seven alone. You get to the end of year seven by engaging with your teachers, asking for help and making sure that you've kind of tried your absolute best along the way. Okay, I hope you have a lovely weekend. I don't think it's going to be quite as sunny, um, but enjoy it regardless. And I will see you next week.